Hare Krishna. My dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the live studios in Hythe, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel, where we're trying to create the, the mood of Hythe, which in anglo saxon means haven. We created a haf safe haven to hear the straight sauce, the Shabda Brahma, transcendental sound from the Vedas, especially from the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and other books in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, and especially Srila Prabhupada's deliverance and presentation of that pure uh, philosophy. <coughs> a little late today, I had a meeting with uh, Doyle Mora, the new temple president of uh, So Street, and also Radharaman. We call him the Prince of Hive. He's now the, you know, more or less the ad hoc VP of London, also helping out there. And uh, we read out, you know, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's quotes to his leading devotees before he left. Sixty-four of them, very, very intense, very relevant, and. Uh, embodied in the teachings of Srila Prabhupada and his purports and his own lecture and pr presentation of Krishna consciousness. So forgive, forgive us for that. And I was speaking for three and a half hours before I got here. So again, my voice is not so strong. But hey, the show must go on. Hare Krishna. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur uh, wrote compiled a book called Sri Krishna Lila Stava, which was meant, we, uh, were, we participated in the, the publication of this book, which was translated and commented upon by um, Gopi Puranadana Prabhu. And I did the first editing, and Jai Dwaita March did the Polish edit. Um, and in that Krishna Lila Stava, Srila Sanatana Goswami planned to offer 108 obeisances, meaning he would state every few verses, this is the first obeisance, this is the second. And he did 108 obeisances to the Krishna Leela, uh, Vrindavan Leela of Krishna uh, in his pastimes, which ended with the killing of Kangsa. And so this Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram is the 107th obeisance of Srila Sanatana Goswami offered to the Leela of Krishna. And therefore, it's very relevant to our reading of the Srimad Bhagavatam together. It is, goes like this. Sarva Shastrabdipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja <coughs> Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O Nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwandoditaditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita, O life heir, of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you were the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You were the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvadasavasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando matsangin madguro man mahadana mandis dadagamad bhagya mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. 
Asadu Sadhuta Dayan Atini Chuchata Kada Hanamun Chagada Chen Mam Prem Narit Kantayoks Buddha O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <coughs> So, we reached the third chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Krishna is the source of all incarnations and we just finished reading yesterday for the second time the Prayama Sutra of the Bhagavatam the shloka that embodies the mission of the, of the book Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam Eti Chang Shakala Krishna Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam in text 28. We read it twice because I made a mistake, what we call an eye skip in the trade of over voicing uh, books and things. And uh, I wanted to make sure that it was not that it was not left like that. So I started yesterday from 1328 and I read through until 1335. 34. So today we're going to start this uh, reading with, with text 35 of chapter 3 of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Thus, learned men describe the births and activities of the unborn and inactive, which are undiscoverable even in the Vedic literatures. He is the Lord of the heart. Purport. I'll read it again. <clears throat> this is so good. Thus, learned men describe the births and activities of the unborn and inactive, which are undiscoverable, even in the Vedic literatures. He is the Lord of the heart. Purport. Both the Lord and the living entities are essentially all spiritual. Therefore, both of them are eternal and no neither of them has birth and death. The difference is that the so-called births and disappearances of the Lord are unlike those of the living beings. The living beings who take birth and then accept, again accept death, are bound by the laws of material nature. <clears throat> but the so-called appearance and disappearance of the Lord are not actions of material nature, but are demonstrations of the internal potency of the Lord. They are described by, great, by the great sages for the purpose of self-realization. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita by the Lord that His so-called birth in the material world and His activities are all transcendental. And simply by meditation on such activities, one can attain realization of Brahman and thus become liberated from material bondage. In the Shrutis it is said that the birthless appears to take birth. The Supreme has nothing to do, but because He is omnipotent, everything is performed, is performed by Him naturally, as if done automatically. As a matter of fact, the appearance and disappearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His different activities are all confidential, even to the Vedic literatures. 
yet they, they are displayed by the Lord to bestow mercy upon the conditioned souls. We should always take advantage of the narrations of the activities of the Lord, which are meditations on Brahman in the most convenient and palatable form. Text 36 The Lord, whose activities are always spotless, is the master of the six senses and is fully omnipotent with six opulences. He creates the manifested universes, maintains them, and annihilates them without being in the least affected. He is within every living being and is always independent. Purport The prime difference between the Lord and the living entities is that the Lord is the creator and the living entities are the created. Here he is called the Amogalila, which indicates that there is nothing lamentable in his creation. Those who create disturbance in his creation are themselves disturbed. He is transcendent. Those who create disturbance in his creation are themselves disturbed. He is transcendental to all material afflictions because he is full with all six opulences, namely wealth, power, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. And thus he is the master of the senses. He creates these manifested universes in order to reclaim the living beings who are within them suffering the threefold miseries, maintains the universes, and in due course annihilates them without being the least affected by such actions. He is connected with this material creation very superficially as one smells odor without being connected with the odorous article. Non-godly elements, therefore, can never approach him despite all endeavors. Text 37 Nachasya kaschen niponen datur avaiti jantu kumunisha utihi namani rupani mano bicho bi santanvato nata charam charyam bi ivad jaha. The foolish, with a poor fund of knowledge, cannot know the transcendental nature of the forms, names, and activities of the Lord, who is playing like an actor in a drama. Nor can they express such things, neither in their speculations nor in their words. Purport No one can properly describe the transcendental nature of the Absolute Truth. Therefore it is said that he is beyond the expression of mind and speech. And yet, there are some men with a poor fund of knowledge who desire to understand the absolute truth by imperfect mental speculation and, faultly, and, the, and fault, faulty description of his activities. To the layman, his activities, to the layman, his activities, appearance and disappearance, his names, forms, his paraphernalia, his personalities, and all things in relationship with him are mysterious. There are two classes of, materi of materialists, namely the fruitive workers and the empiric philosophers. The fruitive workers have practically no information of the absolute truth. And the mental speculators, after being frustrated in fruitive activities, 
turn their faces toward the absolute truth and try um, to know him by mental speculation. And for all these men, the absolute truth is a mystery, as the jugglery of the magician is a mystery to children. Hare Krishna. Being deceived by the jugglery of the Supreme Being, the non-devotees, who may be very dexterous in fruity work and mental speculation, are always in ignorance. With such limited knowledge, they are unable to penetrate into the mysterious region of transcendence. The mental speculators are a little more progressive than the gross materialists or the fruitive workers. But because they are also within the grip of illusion, they take it for granted that anything which has form, a name, and activities is but a product of material energy. For them, the Supreme Spirit is formless, nameless, and inactive. And because such mental speculators equate the transcendental names and forms of the Lord with mundane names and forms, they are in, in fact in ignorance. With such a poor fund of knowledge, there is no access to the real nature of the Supreme Being. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord is always in a transcendental position, even when He is within the material world. But ignorant men consider the Lord one of the great personalities of the world, and thus they are misled by the illusory energy. Hare Krishna, Śrīla Prabhupāda ki jāya. Mm -hmm. Text 38 Nave dadatu padavim padasya duranta birdasya ratanga panahe yo mayaya santatayanu vritya bhajeta tat Padasarojagandam. Only those who render unreserved, uninterrupted, favorable service unto the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, who carries the wheel of the chariot in his hand, can know the creator of the universe in his full glory, power, and transcendence. Purport. <clears throat> Only the pure devotees can know the transcendental name, form, and activities of the Lord due to their being completely freed from the reactions of fruitive work and mental speculation. The pure devotees have nothing to derive as personal profit from their unalloyed service to the Lord. They render favorable service to the Lord incessantly and spontaneously without any reservation. Everyone within the creation of the Lord is rendering service to the Lord indirectly or directly. No one is an exception to this law of the Lord. Those who are rendering service, those who are rendering service indirectly, being forced by the illusory, illusory, the illusory agent of the Lord, are rendering service unto him unfavorably. But those who are rendering service unto him directly, under the direction of his beloved agent, are rendering service unto him favorably. Such favorable servitors are devotees of the Lord, and by the grace of the Lord they can enter into the mysterious region of transcendence by the mercy of the Lord, but the mental speculators remain in darkness all the time. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord Himself guides the pure devotees toward the path of realization due to their constant engagement in the loving service of the Lord in spontaneous affection. That, that is the secret of entering into the kingdom of God. Fruitive activities and speculation are no qualifications for entering. Text 39 
Only by making such inquiries in this world can one be successful and perfectly cognizant. For such inquiries invoke transcendental ecstatic love. I will read this Sanskrit. Ateha danya bhagavanta itam yad vasudeve kilalokanate kurvanti sarvat makam atma bhavam nayatrabuya parivarta ugraha. Hmm, ugraha. Only by making such inquiries in this world can one be successful and perfectly cognizant. For such inquiries invoke transcendental ecstatic love under the personality of Godhead who is the proprietor of the universe, of all the universes and guarantee cent percent immunity from the dreadful rep repetition of birth and death. Purport The inquiries of the sages headed by Shonaka are herewith praised by Sutta Goswami on the merit of their transcendental nature. As already concluded, only the devotees of the Lord can know Him to be to a considerable extent, and no one else can know Him at all. So the devotees are perfectly cognizant of all spiritual knowledge. The personality of Godhead is the last word in, the, in absolute truth. Impersonal Brahman and localized Paramatma, Super Soul, are included in the knowledge of the, pers the Personality of Godhead. So one who knows the Personality of Godhead can automatically know all about Him, including His multipotencies and expansions. So the devotees are congratulated as being all successful. A, <clears throat> a cent percent devotee of the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> pardon me, a, a cent percent devotee of the Lord is immune to the dreadful material miseries of repeated birth and death. Hare Krishna. Text 40. Idam Bhagavatam Nama Puranam Brahma Samitam Uttam Shloka Charitam Chikara Bhagavan Rishihi Ni Shreyasaya Lokasya Danyam Swastyayanam Mahat This scripture named Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of God and it is compiled by Srila Vyasadeva the incarnation of God. It is meant for the ultimate good of all people, and it is all successful, all blissful, and all perfect. Can we hear that again? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Idam Bhagavatam Nama Puranam Brahma Samitam Uttama Shloka Charitam Chakara Bhagavan Rishihi Ni Shreya Saya Lokasya Danyam Swastayanam Mahat This scripture, named Srimad Bhagavatam, is the literary incarnation of God, and it is compiled by Srila Vyasadeva the incarnation of God. It is meant for the ultimate good of all people and it is all successful, all blissful and all perfect. Purport Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu declared that Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless 
sound representation of all Vedic knowledge and history. Therein are selected histories of great devotees who are in direct contact with the Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Lord Sri Krishna and is therefore non-different from Him. Srimad Bhagavatam should be worshipped as respectfully as we worship the Lord. Thereby, we can derive the ultimate blessings of the Lord through its careful and patient study. As God is all light, all bliss, and all perfection, so also is Srimad Bhagavatam. We can have all the transcendental light of the Supreme Brahman, Sri Krishna, from the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam, provided it is received through the medium of the transparent spiritual master. Lord Chaitanya's private secretary, Srila Sarup Damodar Goswami, advised all intending visitors who came to see the Lord at Puri to make a study of the Bhagavatam from the person Bhagavatam. The person Bhagavatam is the self-realized bona fide spiritual master and through him only can one understand the lessons of the Bhagavatam in order to receive the desired result. One can derive from the study of the Bhagavatam all benefits that are possible to be derived from the personal presence of the Lord. It carries with it all the transcendental blessings of Lord Sri Krishna that we can expect from His personal contact. Śrīla Prabhupāda Ki Jai And I might add that if we hear the proper way to study is not through an academic exercise but to hear regularly in a, in a, in a setting like this with, with in, a, in an assembly of devotees and then have reflections. And if we apply those instructions by hearing every day in small bits uh, and apply those instructions into our own characters and treat others in that mood, then Krishna consciousness spreads. That is the process. The mass distribution of these purports and this, these verses. This was Prabhupada's plan for re-spiritualizing the world. And it cannot be done in a few years or even in a few generations. This will take thousands of years. But it will happen because it is the will of the Lord, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just as Krishna revealed to Arjuna that the battle was already won before he, did, before he engaged in it, so Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed us and told us that this movement will spread throughout the world and become highly influential. And that means, because it came from his lips, that it is already done. It's just a matter of who's going to get the credit which he gives to his devotees. Not begrudgingly, but willingly and eagerly wanting to give us all the necessary potencies and knowledge to spread this movement. Text 41 Tadidam Rayam Tadidam Rayaham Asa Suttam Atmaivatam Suttam Atmavatam Badam Sarvave de Tihasanam Sadam Sadam Samudritam Sri Vyasadeva delivered it to his son, who is the most respected among the self realized. After extracting the cream 
of the Vedic literatures and histories of the universe. Purport Men with a poor fund of knowledge only accept the history of the world from the time of Buddha or, six, or since 600 BC. And prior to this period, all histories mentioned in the scriptures are calculated by them to be only imaginary stories. That is not a fact. All the stories mentioned in the Puranas and Mahabharata and so on are actual histories, not only of this planet, but also of millions of other planets within the universe. Sometimes the history of planets beyond this world appears to such men to be unbelievable, but they do not know that different planets are not equal in all respects and that therefore some of the historical facts derived from other planets do not correspond with the experience of this planet. Considering the different situation of different planets and also time and circumstances, there is nothing wonderful in the stories of the Puranas, nor are they imaginary. We should always re remember the maxim that one man's food is another man's poison. We should not, therefore, reject the stories in history of the Puranas as imaginary. The great rishis like Vyas had no business putting some imaginary stories in their literatures. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, historical facts selected from the histories of different planets have been depicted. It is therefore accepted by all the spiritual authorities as the Maha Purana. The special significance of these histories is that they are all connected with activities of the Lord in a different time and atmosphere. Srila Shukadeva Goswami is the topmost personality of all the self-realized souls and he accepted all this as the subject of studies from his father, Vyasadeva. Srila Vyasadeva is the great authority and the subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam being so important, he delivered the message first to his great son, Srila Shukadev Goswami. It is compared to the cream of the milk. Vedic literature is like the milk ocean of knowledge. Cream or butter is the most palatable essence of milk and so also is Srimad Bhagavatam for it contains all palatable, instructive and th authentic versions of different activities of the Lord and His devotees. There is no gain, however, in accepting the message of the Bhagavatam from the unbelievers, atheists, and professional reciters who make a trade of Bhagavatam for the laymen. It was delivered to Srila Shukadev Goswami and he had nothing to do with the Bhagavata business. He did not have to maintain family expenses by such trade. Srimad Bhagavatam should therefore be received from the representative of Shukadev who must be in the renounced order of life without family encumbrance. Milk is undoubtedly very good and nourishing, but when it is touched by the mouth of a snake, it is no longer nourishing. Rather, it becomes a source of death. Similarly, those who are not strictly in the Vaishnava discipline should not make a business of this Bhagavatam and become a cause of spiritual death for so many hearers. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that the purpose of all the Vedas is to know Him, Lord Krishna. And Srimad Bhagavatam is Lord Sri Krishna Himself in the form of recorded knowledge. Therefore, it is the cream of all the Vedas and it contains all spiritual facts of all times in relation with Sri Krishna. It is factually the essence of all histories. How many, how many words? 
verses we have before. In the end of the chapter. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. 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 Hare. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we'll stop our reading tonight. Uh, it's five seven forty six. We're more or less on time. Although we started a little late, but still, we have to keep our regulation. So we'll start again tomorrow at text 42. Hare Krishna. And thanks to Srila Prabhupada for all of these wonderful purports, glorifying the Srimad Bhagavatam, especially on this New Year Day, the beginning of 2022. And as I said last night, today is the Neck is the is the first day of the rest of one's life. So therefore, if we live in that consciousness, Krishna consciousness, by hearing the Bhagavatam every day, every day becomes New Year. Hare Krishna. Happy New Year. So we'll ask the assembled sages to please uh, reflect upon what you heard and give your realizations or discussions or questions or whatever you want. Hare Krishna. First up is from Bhakta Jason. Bhakta Jason, first out of the block tonight. Thank you very much. Hare Bowl. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Prabhupada. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hearing Sri the Prabhupada's books is the best way to start the year off right. Thank you. Thank you. And all our resolutions are right there in these purports. <laughs> From Sudevi Dasi. Haribo Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. From Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Haribo Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Jai Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada in your daily reading. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Bhakti Noel. Bhakti Noel. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. And all glories to His Divine Grace. Soaking in this transcendental sound vibration to kick off the new year in Krishna consciousness with you guiding us on our journey. I can't think of anything better. Thank you for your service. Thank you very much for yours, for hearing. If we serve the Bhagavatam by hearing and then following what it says and explaining it to others, then we are serving the Bhagavatam. Even just hearing the Bhagavatam in that mood is serving the Bhagavatam. And therefore, according to these verses, is serving directly Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For this book is a literary incarnation of Krishna. So to hear the holy name, you know, we have our japa beads, we chant, we made a vow, we chant every day, a certain number of rounds, but it's not, that's not the end of it. It's not just a ritual that we have to perform because we were told to do it. It's meant to be done as a service. In other words, we're meant to serve the holy name. That means we chant in the mood of pleasing Krishna, pleasing the senses of Krishna and the holy name, which is not different from Krishna. Pinatmam, Nama, Namino. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Happy New Year. From Subaral Rajagopal. Subaral Rajagopal, Hari Bo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for the reading of the transcendental verses and translations. In the world of Dukalayam, what a perfect vaccine. Guarantee cent percent immunity from the dreadful repetition of birth and death. Honey Bo, nice point. 
let us not be an anti-vaxxer of the Bhagavatam that is Bhagavatam is the vax is the supreme vaccination that's fact thank you very much Hare Krishna from Gopal Roy Haribo Gopal Roy Dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all Jai. glories to Sri Prabhupada. Prabhupada. I find these as some of the most elegantly powerful purports in all of his Divine Grace's books. Yes. One question I was thinking. When Sri Prabhupada says that the Bhagavatam should be understood from a transparent spiritual master, does Sri Prabhupada's purports in themselves fulfill this qualification? Or is there more help needed by a devotee in the disciplic succession that is still physically present on the earth? They're both true. Both thoughts are true. And I'll explain to you why. Because when Vyasadeva uh, explained the Bhagavatam to Shukadeva Goswami, Shukadeva Goswami had just come out of the womb he stayed in the womb for 16 years. He had no initiating guru. He had no spiritual education, in ter- formal spiritual education from uh, uh, second initia- first and second initiation of the sacred thread. And according to the Vedic standard, if you're not initiated into the uh, sacred thread, then you can't study the Vedas. But he was a pure, liberated soul. So he took the Bhagavatam. First he ran away. And all he heard was a little bit of the Bhagavatam to convince him to come out of the womb given to him by Krishna himself, personally, the sound. And then, while he was out roaming around the forest naked, his very intelligent father, Vyasadeva, who was also a literary incarnation of Krishna, uh, stationed some of his disciples around the forest and as Shukadev was walking around he would every once in a while hear a verse from the Bhagavatam and even though he was liberated he became attracted to Krishna and the Bhagavatam he came back to his father's ashram and heard the whole Bhagavatam from him so then he again wandered and he wandered right into the place where Shukadeva, where Prikshit Maharaj was sitting with all the great sages of the universe including Vyasadeva's father and Narada Muni, Narada Muni, his spiritual master, his father's spiritual master and he was immediately given the, the place of the uh, speaker, the elevated, the elevated seat of the speaker and everyone bowed down to him immediately just by looking at him just as, as looking at his physiognomy they saw that he was actually pure and fully realized and he repeated the Bhagavatam exactly as he heard it from his father without changing one word at that time there were no books the Bhagavatam was only written down a few hundred years after that so everything was communicated by memory. That was the Vedic knowledge. And he repeated every word without changing one word. But the Bhagavatam changed. By being spoken by him, the Bhagavatam changed. It became more sweet. It became more powerful. Even though it is a literary incarnation of Krishna, which is all-powerful. So that same principle applies to every person who has heard from a person, who has heard from a person, from who has heard from a person, from that original beginning of the disciplic succession, from Krishna to Brahma, from Brahma to Narada, from Narada to Vyasadeva, from Vyasadeva to Madhvacharya, and all down to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and then the six Goswamis and other liberated souls down to Śrīla Prabhupāda. And we're hearing directly from Śrīla Prabhupāda and anyone who repeats those instructions in his own words or literally uh, 
becomes uh, a representative of God and can sit on the Vyasasan and repeat the Bhagavatam and make it even sweeter. That is the law of disciplic succession and no one can change that. It never ends. And when it does almost seem to end, then Krishna comes or sends an empowered uh, person to make sure that the disciplic succession is maintained. And that goes on all the way through the universe, even to the end of Kali Yuga. There is always a person who's representing God. Maybe sometimes they may seem to not be there, but they're there. Very few. And finally, Kalki Avatar comes and cleans the whole mess. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Krishna himself. And he appeared on this planet 500 years ago only. That's only 10 personalities removed from Śrīla Prabhupāda and 11 from us. So if we repeat these teachings sincerely in glorification of Krishna in the line, then anyone will get the same benefit by hearing it. Hare Krishna. Daitari Haridas. Jai Haribo Daitari Haridas. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. All glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. One point I picked up on was that when one is a cent per cent pure devotee, he transcends the miseries of birth and death. It seems like a long way to go, for me anyway. It's a long way to go, but it's a very short journey at the same time. It can take millions of births, or it can take one instant. It depends on the receptivity of the hearer and the potency of the speaker. If you have a potent speaker, but you don't have a receptive hearer, you get the picture is blurry. But if both the speaker and the hearer are sincere and eager to hear, that is the only qualification. Don't think that you have to be completely free from any material thoughts or completely free from any mistakes or anything like that. The, 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 the only essential quality is the eagerness to hear, the eagerness to want to know about the Lord and to want to be with the Lord. And with that eagerness and, we, and, re, and repeated hearing from the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, through a person in disciplic succession, we get everything, as we just heard in these purports. It's not that it's any different now. Prabhupada said when he was asked, what will happen when you die? He said, I will never die. I will live forever in my books. That doesn't mean that we don't, we don't need or, can, or, or, or don't, yeah, don't need to take initiation from a person in his line and hear the holy name, receive the holy name, and receive these holy scriptures from such persons. But we are hearing them from Prabhupada. That's what this daily readings of Prabhupada is all about. I'm trying my best to read mainly Srila Prabhupada's words and comment on the instructions uh, on the books when I'm asked uh, or when I voluntarily speak also uh, based on that teachings without changing the message. There may be different examples, there may be different words, but not changing the message. And in general, the same words. Hare Krishna. Rati Gunjari. Hari Bo Rati, Hari Krishna. <coughs> Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for another valuable transmission of transcendental knowledge. Thank you deeply for taking sannyas on this day on the Roman calendar back in 1979. 
We are all benefiting tremendously by your sacrifice of continuous hearing and chanting the glories of the Supreme Lord. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Glories to Tamal Krishna Maharaj. Glories to all of the leaders that I have been fortunate enough to meet and serve and follow, especially Jayananda Maharaj. Jayananda was the first person who, <clears throat> well, I took the book from Prabhupada direct, well, indirect, but I took the book and became a devotee instantaneously. And then I went and, and to visit the San Francisco temple a few days later, and Prabhupada happened to arrive on the same day. And I met him face to face. I didn't talk to him, I didn't meet him, but I heard him and saw him and fell on my face on the ground and dedicated my whole life to him the first time I laid eyes on him. And even before that, when I touched his books and read a few pages. So, uh, very fortunate I am, and I'm trying to pass that fortune on to others as best I can with all my imperfections and shortcomings. Uh, I'm trying to pass it on to others, and I think that that attitude is uh, what is effective. So I thank you very much for your loving uh, appreciation. And it doesn't, uh, it's not received by me lightly. Hare Krishna. I become empowered by all of you because of your receptive ears and hearts and yes, when it comes back to me through these reflections and sometimes questions even, uh, it just increases the glories of the Bhagavatam, it cre increases the sweetness and glories of uh, the holy name and, and Krishna consciousness, which is explained to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, Anandam Bodhivardhanam. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss. And that is every single person, human being, is capable of serving the Bhagavatam, as it says in these prayers that we recite every day. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for those kind words. Rati. From Anandamurti Devi Dasi. Yes, Anandamurti. Dear Guru Maharaj and all devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for reading every single day. It is very much encouraged that we should hear and live as if today is the last day. It's the first day. <laughs> and the last day. <laughs> Correct. I should become more serious for every moment and try to fix my mind to Sri the Prabhupada's words and apply them in my life. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for understanding the essence of these teachings. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <coughs> more from Daitari Hari. Hari Bo Daitari Hari. I also really like the point Prabhupada makes about the different Puranas and histories being spoken for the benefit of different men in different situations according to time and place. Yes. It ties into your answer to my question a couple of nights, nights ago. <coughs> it really gets me appreciating the broadness of Vedic culture yes. and moreover the compassionate outreach of Krishna, giving all types of people the chance to come closer to Him. Yes. Thank you very much. That's a lovely reflection. Thank you. Keep living by that and you will reach perfection in this life. Hare Krishna. From Rasika. From Rasika Shiramani. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank Hare you Krishna. so much again for your faithful and steady example in reading Srimad Bhagavatam to us. Thank you. Your Hare words Krishna. your words tonight uh 
regarding how the Srimad Bhagavatam becomes sweeter as it's read and heard in disciplic succession reminded me of um, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita oh. when um, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda and their associates, well, Lord Chaitanya opened the floodgates of love of Godhead and uh, all, he, Lord Nityananda and the associates all partook of that and spread it indiscriminately. Mm -hmm. And the more they did so, the more it increased. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. Hare Thank Krishna. you so much for reminding us. Hare Krishna. He's hearing the Chaitanya Tartami the more times in a lifetime than most people. <laughs> so listen up when he, he talks about the CC. And by the way, the uh, speaking of the CC, the uh, master files are coming back to us in a very nice rate. It's going to take some time because the the recording was pretty rough, you know, especially in the beginning. Uh, but we we can we can see now that it's going to happen, not too long. I would say maybe a couple of months until we get all of the files mastered. And then, of course, it depends on how long it takes the BBT to actually release it through these different platforms. We look forward to hearing Vaisheshika Prabhu's promotion of it, <laughs> which he told me he wanted to do. So as many devotees as possible can download it, you know, and uh, hear it and let it add to their uh, increase of their ecstatic love for Krishna, Hare Krishna. From Gauranga Gopal. Hare Bo Gauranga Gopal. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. I like the verse 37 where it is said that the foolish cannot know the transcendental nature of the Lord. Hmm who is playing like an actor in a drama. Mm. So many people nowadays try to imagine powerful and attractive characters to display in so many dramas, mm. movies, and so on. Mm. It is amazing how none can stretch their minds to grasp even a glimpse of Krishna's glories, which remain inconceivable. Also amazing how for the devotee, it is so easy to accept Krishna's unlimited opulences. Mm. Yes, thank you very much. That was wonderful. Very nice. And all these thoughts that glorify the Bhagavatam by these reflections are also a part of the Krishna consciousness movement. They're also a part of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. They're still going on for those who have the eyes to see and if you remember there's verses in the Bhagavatam that says even if one tries to understand what he's seeing he can't see anything unless he has this understanding of the relationship between the supreme source of everything Krishna and the spiritual and material energy and ourselves as individual sentient beings uh, and their relationships in all detail. Those persons are rare and those are the persons we need to hear from. Hare Krishna. And more from Rati Manjari. Hari Bo Rati Manjari Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna. On this auspicious day we pray for your continued and increasing health and wellness so you may fulfill the strong desires in your heart to record and share all of Sri the Prabhupada's most important books with the world. Yes, thank you so much. I take that as an extreme blessing and I will run with it as long as I'm able to. Hare Krishna, thank you for that encouraging those encouraging words. And, uh, one comment from Gopal Roy. Hare Bo Gopal Roy. Just want to give a spec special recognition to Goranga Gopal Prabhu for winning the marathon this year. Haribo Goranga Gopal Ki Jai. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that he's getting the blessings of being able to hear more deeply 
as reciprocation from Lord Chaitanya and Srila Prabhupada, Haribo. Thank you everyone for another wonderful uh, daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, especially on this day, New Year's. We had a wonderful New Year's Eve reading and reflections and continuing. So let us make this our New Year's resolution that we will do this for this next year and forever, eternally. Hare Krishna. This will solve all of the other problems of life. No need for any other solutions. The, this will solve all the problems. Not, not exactly that we won't have problems, but we will not be disturbed by the problems and we will not have to forget Krishna by the problems uh, if we keep hearing. So this is our New Year's, New Year's resolution and I hope everyone will join in that I will always hear and chant uh, Srila Prabhupada's major books, especially the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, because all of the other books are coming from these books. They're the source of all of the Goswami's literatures, uh, Gos uh, especially Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Jiva Goswami, and Vishwanath Jagavari Thakur, Balvek Bijabhushan, and others. Uh, and Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, and our own dear Srila Prabhupada, who were, in effect, uh, what do they call it? Trifectorate? Trifectorate? Tri Trifecto, yes. Three liberated souls who came together, you know, to, to spread Krishna consciousness in its pure form all over the world and inject it even into foreign cultures. So we are very fortunate to be on the uh, ground floor of the development of this movement. It's still young. It will be long, young for a long time. Uh, but we are greatly blessed. All the devotees who have contributed to this movement will either go back to Godhead or attain exalted positions in their next life to continue the spreading of the movement and we feel eternally blessed uh, to be with you all. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Samaveda Bhakta Binda ki jai, Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. And we'll see you tomorrow night as the unfolding of the Srimad Bhagavatam becomes sweeter and more powerful every single day. Happy New Year. Today is the, is the first day of the rest of your life. And what you do with it will determine your spiritual destiny. See you tomorrow. <laughs>